Hello and welcome to the Candid Cash Flow Podcast, Episode 4. I'm your host, Ava Fails. episode is sponsored by Blinkist. Do you want to be well read but feel like you don't have time for reading? Blinkist allows you to consume the main points of a title in a matter of minutes. With 2,000 plus titles and 40 new ones being added each month, sign up for a free trial and see what we mean. Today we're going to talk about 18 opportunities to create passive income. But before we get into it too far, what is passive income? Well, in my own words, passive income is a revenue that's gained from either doing no work or just doing the work one time and getting paid for it on multiple occasions. Um, The work can either refer to doing actual tasks or making an investment in time or money or all of the above. So why do you think passive income is important? It's certainly not a requirement to be successful financially, but it's important to diversifying your income streams from your active income, which is your job or whatever it is that you do to actively make money. Passive income happens while you're asleep, on the weekends, when you're on vacation, in the evenings when you're spending time with your family, gives you opportunities to make money during all those times when you're not doing any work. Because remember, you did the work or invested the time or money that one time and it pays back to you on multiple occasions. Whew, have I got a monster of a show for you all today? 18 opportunities to earn passive income let's get into it number one investing now i have to admit this is an area where my knowledge wanes i'm not you know on the up and up with investing there's i know there's a lot of money to be made in it remember in episode one when we discussed having to spend money to make money that would definitely be the case with investing you need a lot of knowledge to get into investing seriously it's something you have to track and read and monitor all the time Um, You can hire an advisor to invest for you, I believe, a financial advisor. If you just want to get into it and dabble a little bit, though, you can use an app on your smartphone like Acorns, for example. Um, It takes the change left over from your credit and debit card purchases and, and invests it for you. Number two, high yield savings accounts. Now, if you're looking for a safe invest- investment, this is the one to do. It's it's boring. There's nothing to look at or watch. You deposit the money, and it accrues interest for you. But you're not going to lose your life savings in that process. If that's something that you're interested in doing, you're probably going to get a better interest rate with an online bank like EverBank or Synchrony. Be sure and check the show notes to get all the links. All right, number three, monetizing things you're already doing. For example, did you know you can use an app like AdMe to earn money every time you unlock your phone screen? How much can you make? Well, with some apps, you can make up to seven to fifteen dollars per month. That's a Netflix subscription, people. To earn from normal activity, both on your computer and your smartphone, you could try a company like Swagbucks where you do watch videos, do surveys, and that kind of thing to earn points toward gift cards. Um, It's one of the older, more trusted companies paying you to do things like uh, Try Dollar Shave Club and Search the Web. Number four, credit cards with rewards. Now, whether you're going for the frequent flyer miles or points that convert to cash, it's free money on spending you were going to do anyway. It's a no-brainer. Number five, earn money from your photographs. 
Did you know that you don't have to be a professional photographer to sell your pictures? Most high-end cell phones these days have a high-quality camera, and there are apps where you can sell your photos for a decent chunk of change, people. For example, Class Shot will sell your photo for up to $80 and pay you a percentage. There are also websites where you can sell your photographs as well, like iStock Photo. They will pay you a commission on photo sales. So let's think about that for a second. If you utilize money-making apps on your phone that made you just $15 a month, in two years, the length of most cell phone contracts you would earn $360 toward a new phone purchase. That's not too shabby for doing things you were already doing to begin with and getting $360 you wouldn't have had otherwise. Number six, self-publishing. And this one is one of my personal favorites, passive income method that I am well versed in. In fact, stay tuned and subscribe because I will be discussing self-publishing in detail in the next episode of the Candid Cashflow Podcast. For that reason, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail here, so you'll want to tune in if that's something you're interested in. Number seven, real estate investment. This is an area that has interested me since I was a teenager. Um, I come from somewhat of a humble background. Uh, When I was four years old, my dad retired from 20 years in the Air Force. For my entire growing up, we lived in rented homes. And in 1994, my dad bought our first home, which was a mobile home or trailer. And we actually ended up in a nice park with spacious lots. And the landlord actually just lived kind of catty-cornered to our lot. She had probably 13 to 14 lots in this one park. She owned uh, several parks, but there were 13 to 14 in this particular one. And the lot rent was, I'd say, $150 to $200 per month. And I saw that as ideal, ideal for income because she wasn't responsible for any maintenance on the uh, maintenance on the homes themselves when the park was established they had of course sewage and power run out and the road paved and that was it and they they mowed the yard for us because they had a tractor or whatever but i mean that wasn't something that they had to do you know it's a lot less m- Uh, responsibility than say renting out a home or apartment homes or apartment building yeah you don't you're not responsible for if something goes wrong with the plumbing or the you know the electricity or whatever in a trailer because the person that lives there is the owner of that home you're just renting the space and because it costs like five thousand dollars to move a trailer people tend to stay put So, the significance there was really validated for me. You know, as something that I kept in the back of my mind since, you know, I was 19 or 20. Um, It was really validated for me on a recent episode of the Side Hustle Show with Nick Loper. And I'll also link to that as well. Um, You know, rentals are a solid income opportunity. That You know, it includes options like Airbnb, vacation rentals. That all kind of fits into there. Reliable and, and fairly passive income. Number eight, YouTube. YouTube does not need an explanation from me especially in 2017. Uh, If you find yourself creating any kind of shareable video content, you can earn with it via AdSense on YouTube. Uh, There are a multitude of people making a living and more doing just that. Number nine, blogging. Blogging can be monetized in so many ways and combined with other opportunities like YouTube. The absolute key to earning with blogging is consistency. You must create content consistently. I mean, it's, and, and you know that kind of stretches up across the board. Uh, even with YouTube, you, you know, consistency is the key there as well. 
Number 10, referrals. You can get paid for referring others to apps and programs you're already using. As I mentioned before, the apps like AdMe, ClassShot, Swagbucks, those are all programs that give you a referral link. And when you refer a friend or someone else and they use your link to sign up, you actually end up being paid on whatever they make from those apps as well, usually for the lifetime of their account. Um, So referrals can actually be the bread and butter of using services like Swagbucks, AdMe, and ClassShot. Number 11, publish an app. Now, if you have one eye and half cents these days, you know that apps can be big money if you hit it the right way with a a popular game, a useful app of some sort. And, you know, it's not necessarily limited to your smartphone or, you know, the mobile industry. This can, you know, can spill over into software as well. Um, and you can code it yourself if you have programming knowledge. If not, you can always hire a developer to do it for you. Um, either way, a popular app or game can yield millions of dollars in passive revenue. Number 12, create a course. This is along the same vein as self-publishing. You can earn multiple times by sharing your expertise just that one time through your course. Um, you can distribute paid courses a number of ways, two of which are Udemy and Gumroad. Courses are more popular than you might think, and people are willing to pay more for them than you might think. I mean, I've seen courses ranging anywhere from, you know, dirt cheap, 20 bucks, 17 bucks, all the way up to $5,000. Courses are big money. Number 13, affiliate marketing. Uh, Affiliate marketing, this can be, this can also be lucrative and it can be a a means of monetizing some of the other methods that I've already talked about like blogging and YouTube. Um, If you find affiliate products that are related to your niche, you can easily partner with that company individual product service and include a, a, basically a referral link um, to that product in your description, in your blog, etc. Affiliate, there's a lot of people that have made fortunes with affiliate marketing, and I'd say it's one of the more popular forms of passive income because, you know, once you create the content and you slap that link on it and you send it on its way, it's kind of set and forget after that. Number 14, drop shipping. Drop shipping is where you partner with a company who has products you want to sell and you build an e-commerce store, you stock it with those products, and when a customer buys one of those products off of your store, that company ships the item out for you. You don't have to hold any inventory or handle any type of shipping, customer service, etc. The drop shipper is responsible for all that. The only thing you're responsible for is the sale. If you come to the table with a unique idea here and you're creative, you can make bank with drop shipping. It's become more popular in recent years with AliExpress and Alibaba making it easy just for anybody basically to source products from China for super cheap. But, you know, it's one of the more labor intensive options in this list, I would say, as well, because setting up an e commerce store uh, is not easy by any means. It's fairly simple, but it does take an investment of time, work, and a bit of money. So. Moving on, number 15, vending machines, arcades, laundromats, and ATMs. Now, these aren't really ideal um, unless you, you know, you put the right machine in the right location because, again, this can be a labor-intensive option and you can end up spending a lot more time on maintenance than you might want to. It's not so set and forget. But, like I said, if you have your machine in the in the right location uh, you can do quite well with it for example in Holden Beach North Carolina at the pier 
they have two coin dozer machines you know the ones where you you know the quarter you drop the quarter in and it drops down and it rakes the quarter into the other group of quarters and they drop down and you might get some of them it's kind of a it's kind of like a gambling machine for kids so they've got these two coin dozer machines and the peer owner told me that he makes about eight hundred dollars a month as his cut in the summertime so that means the owner of that ma- that machine is probably making at least eight hundred dollars a month or maybe more The thing to keep in mind there, though, like I said, is the maintenance and repairs. The machines are, you know, far from a set it and forget it option. Number 16, equipment rentals. Now, this is where you would invest in high ticket items like tools, cameras, party tables and chairs, etc. You know, blow up houses and, and rent them out again and again to consumers. Uh, again, you know, it takes a little creativity here, a little know-how in the marketing department, but it can be quite lucrative, you know, cover the cost of your investment fairly quickly. Number 17, t-shirts and other merchandise. Now, if you have a flair for design, you can create t-shirts and sell them on Amazon as well as a plethora of other sites. The most popular option right now is Redbubble, uh, followed by Spreadshirt. Now, let's talk about Amazon for a minute. Amazon has a program called Merch. You can submit your t-shirt designs, and once they're approved, they will put them on Amazon.com. Now... Just the sheer traffic that Amazon.com gets is crazy ridiculous. There are people making a living and then some from Merch by Amazon with t-shirt designs. If you're creative, if you have that flair for design, you can make bank with Merch by Amazon. Um, You can also upload that same design to some of these other platforms, like I said, Redbubble and Spreadshirt being the the two most popular. And some of these platforms offer a lot more than just t-shirts as well. They have journals, backpacks, duvet covers, phone cases, laptop sleeves. Zazzle, one of them, even has where you can create your own postage stamps. The, the possibilities there are just endless. Number 18 podcasting this is my new favorite with podcasting you're combining several methods like blogging affiliate marketing and referrals Um, i wrote a recent blog about this actually having just finished my first week in podcasting if you ever thought about doing a podcast i urge you urge you urge you to do it i am so surprised by how easy and fun it is to do so definitely the the just the sheer amount of things that you can do with audio content is crazy ridiculous you know, if if you write a blog post, you post it on your blog and that's pretty much it because you don't want to get penalties from duplicate content and that kind of thing from Google. So, you know, you post it that one time to your website and you're done with a podcast. I can post it m- multiple places online to all these huge podcast directories to millions of listeners and podcast directories i'm talking about itunes people i'm talking about google play music i'm talking about soundcloud so it gets really huge really fast and then in addition to that i can take my audio put it over a splash screen upload it to all the video sites in addition to that i can transcribe it and turn it into a blog post so not only am i just writing a blog post i have a blog post that you can listen to so uh, it ju- it blows up really cr- really really crazily it's in- it's insane and i'm just like why did i wait two years to do this i just want to hit myself in the head so if it's something that you're thinking about doing do it you cannot go wrong it's fun it's easy if you have questions contact me i'd be happy happy to talk to you about how to get started so that's going to wrap it up for 
the 18 opportunities. Wow, that was a ton of stuff, and I covered that in a short amount of time. So be sure to head over to my website and grab the show notes on this one. Links are in the description. It'll be heyyoava.com slash passive income. Um, I've also set up a mailing list, and I'm being pretty selective about what I'm sending out to you all so I hope you'll consider subscribing to that. The most you'll ever receive would be maybe two emails a week and that's if I have some type of special promotion. Most of the time it would just be a newsletter and I don't even know if I would do that weekly or cut it down to uh, once per month just to kind of but yeah I hope you'll consider subscribing to that. Be sure to grab the show notes uh Subscribe to the podcast and leave me a review would be great. I'm now on iTunes, Stitcher, and in in all the important places. Share this with anybody you feel like could benefit from the information. That's going to do it for this episode. Until next time, turning your passion into cash flow.